Hello Prof Seeker and welcome back to the channel. Have I got a treat for you today? Today I'm going to go through 18 must-have items for Amazon FBA. Now if you're new here, my name is Glenn. I've been a full-time reseller for three years now, but predominantly selling through Amazon FBA. So I've got a lot of experience in shipping products to Amazon FBA. I've gone through lots of bad items of equipment. I've gone through lots of good items of equipment. So what I'm gonna to try to do today is present to you the best things that I use and the things that you need to sell professionally on Amazon FBA. Now I'm gonna split this video into three sections. First one, make your products buyable. Second one, preparing your products for Amazon FBA based on the requirements that Amazon give you. And section three, boxing your products to ship to Amazon FBA. Item number one, a hairdryer. Now you gotta be thinking, why would you need a hairdryer when you're selling products? So when you buy products for resale, a lot of the time they'll have stickers on them somewhere. It might be a clearance sticker, which is great if you're finding clearance stuff, because not many people have it in the market, or you're buying stuff from some stores, for example, if you were to go to Smith's, they sticker all of their products. And what the hairdryer does is you use it on the sticker, it heats up the sticker and heats up the adhesive underneath the sticker, which loosens it, which makes it easier to peel off. When you're shipping products, you want your products to look immaculate. You want them to look like they're fresh, new, and that they haven't been purchased anywhere else. There's nothing worse than a customer receiving a product that's got a sticker on that says 6.99 when you've just sold it to them for 20 quid. Or a sticker that says from Tesco. They're not gonna to need to see that. They just want their product in great condition. Heat up the labels. Now I'm recommending this hairdryer in particular because it folds up. If you're limited on space, this stores away so nicely in your boot, on a shelf, in a cupboard, under the stairs, excellent. Products number two and three. When you've peeled the label off, there's always, almost always, a sticky residue where the label has been. So in order to clear that residue off, you use a product called Goo Gone. And this product is fantastic. What you wanna do is put a tiny, tiny amount on the surface. So unfortunately, what I've done with mine is I've actually taken an edge off the top seal. But what you wanna do really is just put a pin in it. Just put a pin in the top seal and you could either put it on the cloth or directly onto the product, a tiny little bit, let it sit there for a couple of seconds, it will loosen up the adhesive once again, then use your microfiber cloth to wipe it clean. It will leave a little bit of a greasy residue, so make sure you use it sparingly and proper buff it out once you've finished. Best used on plastic, because the plastic, this doesn't, this doesn't affect any plastic products at all, but if you were to have um, a cardboard product, for example, where the cardboard has been printed on, so you've got like a glossy ink layer on the cardboard, use a tiny, tiny amount of this because if you use too much, there's a chance you might start pulling the print off the product itself, uh, in which case you might end up with some smears on it. So if in doubt, test it on a tiny, tiny small area that doesn't really matter to see if any of the ink comes off on your cloth or smudges at all. If it doesn't, fine, go to town, but use it sparingly. Product number three, microfiber cloth. You use a microfiber cloth because it doesn't have any of those sort of like fibery residues that come off from a normal cloth. If you were to use a blue J cloth with a bit of goo gone, that blue sort of ink within the cloth itself will bleed out onto the product. So microfiber cloth doesn't let any of that sort of like fibrous stuff stick on the product, cleans it up nicely, goo gone, job done. Item number four, round clear gloss labels. Sticky labels that you would find on most manufacturers' products. So for example, if you buy a board game, chances are it's not gonna be normal run-of-the-mill 28 millimeter tape that leaves a jagged edge when you cut it off. It is gonna be sealed with one of these babies. If you can see that, it's a round gloss label. And that is used to seal up board games or to seal up any products that look like possibly they've been opened. You can use your Goo Gone, your hair dryer, your microfiber cloth to get the residue of this, if this has been cut, off your previous product and then apply a fresh new one and it looks factory sealed. And now we're on to section two. Woo, we are just flying through this video. Okay, so preparing your products for Amazon based on their requirements. Now Amazon will ask you to prepare your product in one of three ways. Number one, poly bag. Number two, tape. Number three, bubble wrap. And here are my recommendations. 
on Amazon, you can buy 100 mixed poly bags of different sizes. So I think, I believe you get three sizes. Number one, sort of medium size, great for anything, sort of medium size plushes. Tends to be plushes that get poly bagged because uh, in a warehouse environment, they're very likely to get dusty. So if you ship in a white fluffy unicorn, it's gonna come out the other end looking like it's been dragged down a chimney, basically. So these are various sizes, depending on how large the thing is you're gonna ship. Some small, some big, some medium. But effectively, there's very few cases where these have not been adequate. It's only if you're shipping some very large products whereby these poly bags just won't do. So these are technically classed as poly mailers because they're dark, you can't see through them. And when you ship products out, if you're shipping them through the post, you don't necessarily want people to know what's in the bag. So if you ship anything into Amazon that isn't a poly mailer or any kind of plastic bagging that doesn't have any warnings on them, you need to apply your own anti-suffocation label. A suffocation warning label, obviously for safety reasons, if they ship a product, this might be an EU directive, I'm not really sure. But if it's going in, make sure it's labeled. And the second poly bag purchase that I recommend is a much larger bag. So if you're shipping stuff that's bigger, this one has tend to cover everything that I've ever needed in this sort of size, it's rather large. But the beauty of this one, this particular one is, it already has the warnings printed on them. And these are warnings for five different EU countries, England, Spain, France, Germany, and Italy. And if you're selling your products into Europe as well as the UK, I'll do a different video on this, it's a little bit complicated, but I hope you understand. You need to have that warning for each individual language, for each individual country. So the beauty of those bags is that it's already printed on, you don't need to worry about applying your own labels, and you know that it is good for Europe, across the board. Now you could go and buy each individual size of those clear ones with the printed warnings on them. If you're serious about selling into Europe, and you know you're going to do some serious volume of plushes, for example, it's probably beneficial to go and buy each individual size, but all in all, the 100 bags of mixed poly bag sizes and then the larger ones with the labels printed on have been perfect for me. So we've done the poly mailers, we've done the suffocation warning labels, now we're moving on to taping. So Amazon will require you to tape a product if there's a high likelihood that that particular product will come open during transit and the, the internals of that product will come out during the process of them moving through the warehouse. Now this tends to be for cases such as like, if you've got lots of Sharpies in a, in a plastic case, um, they're just sort of like pinched together boxes and they can easily come open. And I imagine in the, in the warehouse many, many times, stuff has just come out and Sharpies have been all over the warehouse and that's those products ruined. So, what you need? Tape dispenser. If you've ever wrapped a Christmas present, you understand the pain you go through dealing with a roll of tape. You spend ages trying to find the edge of it to open it up and then when you open it up you have to get a pair of scissors, so you have to hold it with one hand and then cut the tape with the scissors and then trying to apply it. it, goes all over the place. It's a mess, when you wait for yourself, time is money, make it efficient for you. Tape dispenser, pull, apply, pull, apply. You never lose the edge, because it stays on the edge here like this, jobs are good in. Get a tape dispenser, you need it. Shipping method number three, bubble wrap. I recommend buying a big, big roll of bubble wrap. Bubble wrap can be quite expensive if you buy it in small lots, because that's the more consumer focused and people make a lot more margin if they sell it in smaller amounts. Whereas if you buy a lot, then the chances are you're gonna get it a lot cheaper and I don't think you're gonna run out anytime soon. So, this is the roll of bubble wrap that I use. Now, I've only bought one and I haven't gone through it yet. The reason that's good it's because when you ship some, some of the big, big like boxes of Lego, they need to be bubble wrapped. If you're buying little small rolls, it's not gonna work. You need a huge one like this, and I can go around the entire product, you tape up each side, jobs are good in. It's big, it's gonna last forever, and it's cheaper to buy it like that. So I recommend big roll of bubble wrap, keep it cheap. You just need somewhere to store it because it's quite hefty. And now we're on to section number three, boxing your products for shipping to Amazon's warehouse. Okay, so first item in this section, barcode scanner. So, so useful. I don't know why I never got one of these before, but the day I got it, it revolutionized my life. Pop it in your computer, in your laptop or your desktop, wherever it is, put your cursor in the inventory search bar, 
scan it, bosh, scan your product, and it will immediately come up with the product that you've just scanned based on its EAN code. EAN code is the barcode, that's just the name for it, it's the number that the barcode represents. Scan that, whoop, pulls it up, click it, pop it in your shipment, jobs are good in. Super cheap, very efficient. Now let's move on to labels. Now there's three types of labels you're gonna need for shipping products into Amazon FBA. Labels number one, product labels. I don't know if you can actually see these, but these are 27 up labels. Now the reason for these, this is the standard product label that Amazon will dish you for labeling your products. And what this is, is this is a byproduct label. So every single product you ship needs to have its own Amazon code. When you look at a product in your inventory, you've got the ASIN, which is the code that Amazon used to differentiate all of their products. And then if you look right to the far right column, it might not be there, I've activated it on mine, I don't think it was on there as standard, but you can change which comes or what comes up in your columns, but there's one called FN SKU. And the FN SKU is your unique barcode, so Amazon can identify the products in their warehouse. They'll receive the products from you, they'll scan the barcode, boop, and they will know that that product is yours, and you can have several different products sat under an Amazon ASIN with lots of different FN SKUs. So if you want to take the same product with different quality, so whether it's new, used, very good, not so good, average, whatever the different used options are, you'd have lots of different FN SKUs based on what quality of product you're shipping in. Or if you want to put lots of different prices for the same product, you could have lots of different FN SKUs for the same product. Product labels, they go over the barcode that's already on the product. So this effectively becomes your EAN. Label requirement number two, half and half labels. So this is cut down the middle, you've got two halves, and these are used to go onto the boxes themselves. So you've got your products, you've labeled them individually, so Amazon knows they're yours, and when you put all the products in the box, you apply a two-sided label to the products. One half, UPS, so UPS can handle your product to get it shipped to the Amazon warehouse. Second half, Amazon's barcode, so everything is run with barcodes in Amazon. The second half, Amazon will scan that as it comes into their warehouse, so they'll go, this is Glenn's shipment. So they'll know that it's Glenn's shipment, they'll open it up and then start booking in your products as they come in. Half and half labels, necessary. And the third type of labels that you require are quarters. So this one here is split into quarters, like that, and this is required for heavy box labels. Now Amazon have a requirement, if you ship them a box that's over 15 kilograms, it's a health and safety thing, you need to apply heavy box labels to three of the sides of the box, whatever side that may be. So that the UPS when they're handling it, or the staff in the Amazon warehouse when they handle it, can look at that box and say, yeah, it might be small, but is it heavy? When you've got these heavy box labels on, they can identify it and lift it appropriately with their legs as you should. If you don't lift with your legs, make sure you do, because my dad's done his back in recently, so not, not that he works for me, he just works in a, you know, in a manual environment, should we say. Heavy box labels, it's a requirement, you need to do it. If you're shipping boxes that are over 15, and sometimes they just are. I mean, I always try to keep them under if I can, because it means there's less chance of it being dropped or manhandled. But if it's over 15, then you need the heavy box labels for safety. Okay, next requirement for Amazon FBA, and this is my absolute golden nugget. If you pay attention to one thing that I'm gonna tell you during this video, it is this. Do not mess with an inkjet printer. Inkjet printer, you press the button, get it to print, it goes 12 years later, you've got your labels. If you're shipping 270 products, you will have 10 individual product barcode labels to come out. And it coming out at that speed, it's just going to waste so much of your time. Yeah, sure, you can go make a cup of tea, but sometimes you just want to bang through stuff. You might have a collection come in to take your products away. You just need it done. Get a laser jet printer. It is so fast. You press print and it comes out like that. You can't even get to the printer fast enough before all the, everything's printed out. Amazing. And the specific printer that I'm going to suggest to you, now listen in, this is the really good bit. The specific printer I'm going to suggest to you is the Samsung laser printer. I can't remember the model number off the top of my head, but it is linked down in the description. And the beauty of this particular printer is that there is an eco mode. And this eco mode is fantastic because what it does is if you've got two sheets, what it will do is it will then put it half and half onto your labels. So if you've got your half and half label like this, what normally would happen is it would print out one side UPS, one side Amazon. But what this eco printer does 
is it turns the whole thing into this section here. So for one box, you use one half of a label, slap it on, it's so much quicker and it's so, so much cheaper to ship your products like that. You're gonna use less labels, it comes out faster, that printer is amazing. And because it's a laser jet, it comes with a toner. Now the toner that goes into it is huge. I'll throw one up on screen. And I bought it in March 2016, and I've only gone through two of these toners. Now the toners are very expensive, but the amount of printing you get out of each toner cartridge is excellent. It's phenomenal, it's so cheap, it's so fast. If you haven't got a laser jet printer, definitely get one, and I would certainly consider getting the Samsung Eco model that I've suggested below. There's probably other models that have this Eco software on them, but I haven't identified which ones are which. All I know is that the one I'm linking below is fantastic, and it comes with this Eco software included. Now, the next thing you need to ship boxes into Amazon FBA, obviously, is boxes. So, when I first started out, and I thoroughly recommend anyone does this really when you're starting out, boxes can be expensive. You can pay about £2.50 a box uh, if it's a good one and if it's the right sizes that you need. Uh, whereas firstly, when I first started out, what I ended up doing was I went to my local 24-hour Tesco at midnight because I knew that's when they unpacked the crisps and I would get some of those huge crisp boxes, ply it full of product and then ship that into Amazon. There's one drawback to doing that and that box is a single wall. This is a single wall box. As you can see, it's only got one layer of cardboard along it. And that means, one, it's light, which is good, but there's not much protection to the products themselves. Now, Amazon specifically request that you ship products into them, products into them using a double wall box. Now, this is a double wall box. As you can see, it's got two layers of cardboard going down the side, two corrugated layers. And the reason they ask you to do that is because the products are much, much safer. And that is Amazon's requirement for shipping products into them. Now, if you ship products into Amazon using UPS, which is their standard carrier, but when the products go in, if they get damaged in transit, you can ask Amazon, why has this happened? Your partner carrier has damaged my product. If you do not ship in a double wall box, you have zero recourse to say, why has this got damaged on the way in? So that's my suggestion for shipping double wall boxes. That's Amazon's requirement. If you ship in single, it's at your own risk and it is not what they request or require. So I thoroughly recommend going for a double wall box. Now I use two sizes of double wall box and they have been fine for me across the board. There's literally very few things. that I've got. I picked up some very large things in which case I've had to resize boxes and I've taken maybe those crisp boxes from Tesco, cut them up, strapped it all around. It takes a very long time. I'm shipping pallets now, so I don't necessarily have to do that anymore, but I do still ship boxes. And for the smaller items, these are the two box recommendations that I have. So the two sizes of box that I found most beneficial for me, I can't remember off the top of my head, but what I will do is I will set them up or measure them and I will post the large size box here and the smaller size box here. So you've got the dimensions. Now the smaller box, this is very important, the smaller box is a resizable box. You don't necessarily have to do this and you can resize the box yourself, but it's a bit of a faff. This one is the smaller one of the boxes that I ship. And as you can see, it's got foldable layers down it. So you fill the product from this side and if you get to here, it's got a perforated edge and there's a fold already in the cardboard. So everything folds up in a perfect square it's the sturdiest box you can ship if you've resized it because the box is already prepared. It, you're not ending up with strange folds when you're resizing a box. It's just all there, ready. So I recommend that. The smaller box, get a resizable one and then get one really large one when you know you're absolutely gonna fill it and bigger is better. Because effectively, the more products you get in a box, the less your inbound shipping cost comes in. If you're paying £2.50 for a box and you ship 10 products in there, it's gonna cost you 25p per product. If you pay £2.50 per box and you ship 100 products, it's gonna cost you 2p. So effectively, the bigger the box, the better, providing you stay under the 15 kilogram, but you can go over the 15 kilogram. It really depends on what you're shipping, how you wanna ship it, how safe you wanna get it there. As for boxes, I've provided you links down below of two different sizes that are a good option to you. Although when I buy boxes, I've found somewhere locally that actually just sells boxes. So I go to them maybe every two or three weeks, go fill up the van, go fill up the car, bring it back, and that's me set. 
But to get you guys started, I've linked some links down below, but I thoroughly recommend you go and find a box supplier near you that provides cost-effective prices. Do not go to a storage company like Big Yellow Storage or Easy Storage, because they charge so much money for boxes, because they know they've kind of pigeonholed you. You're in there, you're moving house, you need to get stuff out, you'll buy the boxes at whatever price. But there's definitely cheaper options out there. Find a place locally, source it locally, but in the meantime, there's links below to get you going. Boxes. Obviously you need them. Now let's talk tape. Two sizes of tape. I'm glad I caught those, that looked quite slick. This is a 48 millimeter wide clear packing tape. Now I suggest you use clear packing tape because I've used parcel tape before, which is the brown stuff. But I do tend to find that it's not very sticky. If it gets really hot, then it will tend to peel away and it just isn't secure. This is so much more durable it withstands a lot more like it's just a thicker bit of plastic that's holding your box together and i tend to find this particular one that i'm suggesting link below the adhesive is fantastic bang this on there it is not coming open the amount of times i've received a box and it's been in some flimsy like this is what tesco direct used to ship with super thin plasticky stuff and the amount of times that's come off and come away and you know the product's just arrived in a terrible condition Whereas this is so robust tape, so I thoroughly recommend this one, I've linked it down below. As I mentioned before, you need this, which is 25 millimeter clear packing tape. Goes in your tape dispenser, bosh, 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 bosh. Pretty standard stuff, you can get it anywhere. Buy it in bulk, link below, comes a lot cheaper. Which segues on nicely to my next piece of equipment that you require, and that is a tape gun. So you've got your 48 millimeter wide packing tape. This baby is a game changer. So when you get to the level that I was, I was shipping probably between 15 and 20, 25 boxes per week. That is a lot of taping up of boxes. So like I said before, fumbling around, trying to find the edge of the tape, peeling it off, trying to cut it, trying to put it on the box. Don't do it, just don't. If there's one piece of like upgrade you need immediately, is a nice tape gun. And the beauty of this is, you apply it to one side, you drag it right the way across your box, and there's a cutting blade just here. So when you push down like that, it cuts the tape for you and then this little flap here applies it to the side of the box. So instead of sitting there for ages, measuring it out, trying to cut it, apply it on, you're just like, Brrr! done. Amazing. I don't know why I didn't have one of these sooner. Now, I'm suggesting this particular model because I've used a tape gun a lot, right, over my three years. And I did have a cheaper one than this. So there is a cheaper one available, but my God, this is so much better. It's so robust, like it doesn't flex, it doesn't bend. The blade, the cutting blade is so much better and this applies the tape so much better. And if you wanna chuck this on the sofa, whoop, it's got a little safety flap, safety flap, that hides the cutting blade. You can fling that on your sofa or whatever, depending on where you're packing, but it's got a safety feature as well. So thoroughly recommend this particular tape gun, linked in the description. Next item you need, packing paper. So when you fill a box up, you might fill it up, there's a big gap here, there's a big gap here, there's a big gap here. If you seal up that box, the products inside the box itself will move around. If you've got a heavy item in with a fragile item, that heavy item, when it gets put down, might get thrown into the more fragile item and cause that fragile item to break. In which case, when you're shipping, you need to do something called void fill, where you fill your box with something that is light, but is also going to stop the products moving around when they're in transit. So I recommend this. A giant roll of brown, it's not called cool packing paper, a brown wrapping paper, parcel paper, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Brown parcel paper. And you buy a big roll like this. It comes a lot chunkier than this, but I've used a lot. And it's just perfect. So you just like rip it apart, scrunch it up, in it goes, void fill, sorted. Now you can use newspaper for this. And there's always cheaper ways to do it. If you're starting out, you know, you can source your boxes for free. There's free boxes everywhere. Uh, when it comes to packing paper, you can use a newspaper, you know, go, go buy one on the weekend or if you get one through your door. Yeah, cool, great. Free packing paper. But for me, I find that ink on newspapers can tend to rub off onto products. So if you've got lots of premium, say you've got a premium Sony stereo system in a box and you need some void fill around it, you pack it out with newspaper, depending on how long that product's going to be sat with that newspaper, in the heat, in the rain, whatever it's going to be, that ink might run onto that product. And I did tend to find that I ran out of newspaper and void fill paper very quickly, in which case it just made so much sense just to buy it. Great big roll, 
tear it off, scrunch it up. You don't need to be neat. It's only there to just fill the gap, basically. But I recommend that. You buy a big roll. Last you a very long time. And the last things you need for shipping products into Amazon's warehouse is one tape measure. I've linked a cheap one in the description. This is one I just uh, pitched off my father. So when you ship a box into Amazon, you need to provide them with weights and dimensions. So if you've got you know standard boxes as I do, I can write down large, small, large, small, large, small. When I put them into the Amazon system, I know what the sizes are. But if you're sourcing boxes randomly, um, just getting them where you can, then you need a tape measure to know exactly what the size of each product is. It's very important for Amazon to know the size of the products, uh, the boxes when they go in. They've got a limitation. I've never exceeded the size limitation for a box that UPS will carry. So I wouldn't worry about a box being too big, but it might be too heavy. So things to consider. Tape measure, need it. Second thing, I'm not gonna show you it because it's just literally my bathroom scales, but scales, you need to know how much the box weighs. So when you ship it in, weight, dimensions. So if you've got bathroom scales, you need to have bathroom scales that are electronic. When you put the box on, you need the scales to lock that weight in when the weight comes off. Because if you've got bathroom scales and you've got a little screen on the top that tells you how much weight is on them, when you put the box on, you won't be able to see it you won't be able to see what the weight is. The ones I've got, it just happened to be perfect. So I put the product on, it weighs it, and then it locks the weight once it's figured out what the weight is. So when I take the box off, I can then read the scales and they say, this is your weight. I can write that down and then that goes onto Amazon system. If you haven't got scales that do that, there's another thing you can do, and it's, it's not ideal really. You can weigh yourself, right? Then you pick up the box, stand on the scales and then read the scales, remember the number and then minus your weight off the number and that's a very accurate reflection of how much the box weighs. But when you start to get into heavy boxes, so if you're going 15 kg or plus, you don't really want to be manhandling them too much and carrying them about because you're going to do your back in. It's it's just a, just a faff really basically. So if you've got those kind of scales, my recommendation would be to get a set of scales that has a separate reading dial on it. If my bathroom scales weren't as good as they are and just adequate for the job whereby the reading was on there and I could take it off, I would have invested in one of these because you could put it on and when it's on there you can read it and you can write it down, whatever. Next box, put it down, it's there in front of you, read it, add it into the shipment. So my suggestion would be get a set of scales that is adequate for the job. And now I have some bonus tips for you. These ones aren't necessarily required. I think the rest of it you should have in place or at least have some kind of solution. But this one's kind of like when you start stepping into that professional category, when you start to take this seriously, these things are gonna really benefit you. Number one is a good set of racking. Now in my business room upstairs, I've got desktop computer in front of me, barcode scanner plugged in, I've got a swivel chair, all of the racking is behind me. So the racking I'm suggesting down below is the one that I've used. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's been perfect right width just to have everything on there. And it's heavy duty as well. So you can put some really heavy products on. I tend to fill every single tier and then go right the way to the ceiling with the heavy stuff on the top. And it's been absolutely fine. It's been a dream. It's sturdy. It supports the products. Great. So what I had was racking behind me, desktop in front of me, swivel chair, barcode scanner, spin, scan, type it in. And it is so, so efficient, that particular system. Not, you might not necessarily have that, that kind of space for it. I mean, if you're starting out, you might be in your living room, you might have the product scattered everywhere. But when you start to take this a little more seriously, I would suggest getting a set of racking because it helps no end. If you're selling a lot through eBay, I think you should have racking anyway because you've got products that are sat there. Next bonus requirement is a top-notch smartphone. Now I thoroughly recommend getting a top-notch smartphone because this effectively is your best tool. You can value your products on it for Amazon. When you're out and about in the field, you, you go get your grocery shopping. You think, oh, I'll just pop down this aisle over here, scan a printer. What's that? 20 pounds profit, yes please, in the basket. You can also check your inventory, see how much you've got, manage your pricing. You can almost do the entire process once the products are in using this. So if you follow my Instagram, I recently got this, which is the Samsung S9. Thoroughly recommend it. I'm a big advocate of Android as an operating system for phones because it's so tweakable. I can adjust everything just as I like it in every way possible. Apple's a bit linear, like it kind of is what it is, but one of the benefits of using an Android mobile is if you see on the screen here, 
Right down there at the bottom, I've got my Amazon seller app. So it's a case of boom, unlock the phone, that always stays there. That's like one of the key five at the bottom, Amazon seller app, Bosch. In here, I've got a folder with all my retailers, software that I use, calculator, PayPal, eBay, all those kind of things, little folder. This tool is so, so efficient for me now. I literally bosh it out of my pocket and I'm immediately where I need to be. Samsung S sign, thoroughly recommend it. I did used to have the Samsung S7, which is this model here, but it ended up getting a bit damaged in the end because you see that cracked screen at the top there. Eventually the aux in jack stopped working as well. And now with, with my van, I've got an aux in cable and that's it. I haven't got a Bluetooth. So that really, really, I found that quite frustrating. Running without a podcast is just boring as F. So really, really happy when I got this upgrade sorted. Another benefit to having the Samsung S9 versus the Samsung S7, which is just something I've noticed and I find really, really useful, is that, for example, when you're out and about, you're in the field, if you're in an area you don't really know, you think, right, I'm going to hit this, this, and this store because you found a great product, you want to traverse the country to get more of it, which I've done on many occasions. If you've got your maps open in Google Maps, and then you go to change the app, it comes up with a little screen down the bottom that still shows you the map and where you're going. So that's a really nice feature because if you're driving and say, I'd never say use your phone whilst driving, but if your passenger goes, oh, I want to change the music, they'll change the music and you can still see where you're going. And that leads me on to, you need a dash mount. Like I'd say mount your phone on your dash. I mean, some cars have sat navs, yeah, but that's not very good. Google Maps is the best and it provides live traffic information. So if you're somewhere where you're not used to being, Google Maps, perfect. Have it mounted on your dashboard or on your windscreen. Drive in, no problem, jobs are good in. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend the S9 for that little feature, that's really nice there. So I've linked to the cheapest version of the S9 down below, can't fault it. I've just got this map going to Donny because I'm going to see Jimmy again for another new starter Amazon FBA update. That'll be coming in a few weeks, so keep an eye out for that one. Close that one down. Now another, another thing I highly recommend is you've got to keep these secure and safe. So you can see from this one here, the case doesn't quite cover the corners. So I have dropped this on several occasions and you can see I've got a cracked screen. And it just didn't really do the job. So what I did when I got the Samsung S9 is that I made sure I got a case that covers all corners, like thoroughly. And I've dropped this probably five times already because it's in and out of your pocket so much. If you're outsourcing products, you're just like scan, put it back, scan, put it back, scan, put it back. And it gets dropped, you know, these things happen. But make sure you get one of these rugged cases it's actually a little bit bouncy, so it's got a little bit of bounceability, but no problems. If that phone gets cracked, I'll be very upset, but that case is fantastic. I'll link that down below. It's by a company called Spigeon. Excellent cases. If you're enjoying this content I'm providing, guys, I'm setting up a Patreon for this channel so you guys can support this channel for me to make more videos. I'm going to provide different benefits for different levels of subscription, whether that be monthly phone calls to check in and get advice from me, whether that be me providing you with products, I'm not really sure what the levels are gonna be yet, but that's gonna be set up down below. So thanks for watching, I'm appreciating you guys coming along the journey with me. I will reintroduce question of the week in future episodes, but so far this took so much work to put this content together for you and provide the best information I could. So I thought I'd focus on the content. We'll get back to questions in future videos. These are the things that I've put in place because I've done this for so long now. The benefit of using these pieces of equipment has made my life so much easier so much more efficient and I thought I would share this knowledge with you guys as to the things that I have tried and tested so down below I have linked you either the cheapest option or the best option if it's not the cheapest so for example tape gun I've given you the better option because I recommend it labels I've given you the better options because I recommend them some labels used to peel off and it would tear, ruin a whole set of barcodes. But like I said, guys, those are my suggestions. Links below. If you're enjoying this content, guys, drop it a like down below and maybe consider subscribing to this channel. Keep hustling. Peace.